Hi everyone, we're here again today and we're going to be heading down to Hawkston Park. I've seen lots of videos online about the terrain response for the Freelander 2, but I've never actually seen one that's really explained how each of the functions work and in comparison to each other. So hopefully today we'll be able to see that because it's been pretty wet out there and it's going to be nice and slippery I think. So let's see how it goes. Quite wet this morning as you can see, just on the road on the way down. Here we are arriving at uh, Hawkston Park, Ash 4x4. I've got the Cheshire Land Rover Club sign out as well. It's very scenic here. Um, up on the on the right you can actually go up and see the, uh, the caves and all the rocks and things around the follies. It doesn't look as if it's actually open today I think to the general public, but it's been booked out specially for the Cheshire Land Rover Club. It's really, really slippy here today. I can't imagine what it's going to be like uh, going up some of the steep hills in a minute. Um, there's an easy punch we're going to try and get just here, and then hopefully after that we'll try and get some footage of the terrain response in action. Okay, that should be close enough, I think, to get that punch. Let's see if that reaches. It's going to be way more difficult to get out of this than it was to get in there. Okay, that's number 12 punch. On to the next. Okay, that was with um, mud and rut setting. And he's coming back now. Now, as we said, really, really slippy at the moment. You can see uh, that traction control's working away now as he slides down the hill. One wheel after the other slipping, as you can see there. Look at that. So, Harv, just to confirm, that was the mud and ruts you had that in there then? Yeah, that was the mud and rut setting. We're going to try the grass, gravel, snow and see the difference it makes. Okay, let's go for it then, Harv. Turn, around. turn it around. That's difficult enough. Okay, so he said he's now going for grass, gravel and snow. So, in theory, this is going to be um, uh, less wheel spin. It should actually be taking some of the power away actually reducing the power. In fact, hey, that already looks like it's taken the power away and it's taken all the power away, you couldn't actually get anywhere. That was, that was foot to the floor. That was foot to the floor and that was in the grass, gravel and snow. Yeah, it took away all of the power. Took away all of the power. Yeah. So I thought, well, give, give it one more go just to confirm that's how it works. Yeah, so as we thought, with the uh, grass, gravel and snow, it takes away the power. See if you can get a straight line and give it a bit more power this time. Okay, give it more power this time to start with and see how it goes. Okay, grass, gravel and snow, take two. In fact, as you can see, it's taking very smooth power. So that's all the power half. That's foot to the floor and you can see that's doing nothing it's trying to do it gently and smoothly there quite interesting you can see actually the traction control or at least the uh, terrain response working as well with those wheels okay so what do we got left now to try we've got to try the uh, the sand mode we're going to try the sand mode okay so this is obviously completely inappropriate i expect but we'll see in theory with the sand mode it's actually meant to give us more power so we might actually be able to see some wheel spin because it might want to try and get that sand out from under the wheels at high speed but it should start off more slowly oh it's going through there see that power whoa you see that in fact i'm getting covered with mud here because he's using the sand mode and would you believe it, that sand mode actually, I think, worked as well, if not better, than the um, mud and ruts. Interesting. See what he says when he comes back down. He comes back down. Let's actually try and uh, get a shot from the other side so we can see uh, if that looks any different with the uh, traction control, hill descent working as he comes down. 
Again, we can see those wheels slipping, moving as he comes past. It's so slippery here. And he's going to turn around and maybe we try it in the last mode, which is obviously the normal road mode as well. So hard, that seemed quite remarkable that in the sand mode you've got a nice amount of wheel movement speed there and obviously got you right up there. I, I thought actually maybe even slightly better than the mud and ruts. I thought that as well. It's because it held no power back at all. It was like all out. All out, full bore. Come on, move. Okay. Oh, he should be all right there. We've got another uh, defender trying to get round here as well. You can even see here that defender's even having challenges just in this little bit here of the uh, wet slip. In fact, here, is he going to go up there? Let's look to see how he gets up. Not too much of a problem for the defender, but he's on full muds. But you see, he's still actually not making it uh, get up there super easy. But let's now try final setting then, Harv. Try it on the, the normal road mode to see what difference that makes. Let's just check you've got that in there. Uh, it's in now. Okay, we can see that there. Okay, I'm gonna get back in my position over here where I tend to get sprayed with mud each time. Okay, moving back over to the position. I'm sure it looks all wobbly in the camera, but hey ho, never mind. And let's give him the thumbs up and see how he gets on with the normal road setting. Here he comes. Taking a bit of speed in there this time, but you can see it's it's actually it's sapping some of the power out of the vehicle. It's not allowing it to actually give a, that power, and so it's got a bit further this time, I think, than the uh, grass, gravel, and snow, but not much. He lost all the power as he went up there. Let's ask him again what he thought of that one then. So then, normal mode. That gave me power to begin with, but as soon as it slipped, it was like, no, I don't want to go anymore. Hey, I'm just looking as well here. Did you change your response? I, I just changed it to come back down the hill, so I have the hill descent. Ah, good idea. Otherwise, yeah. you might be rolling all the way back down. Yeah. yeah, did you go one more go in normal, just see if you get to the same place? I'll give it a bit more go and see if anything happens. Okay, you were giving it a fair bit of go the first time, yeah. but uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, he's going to give it one more go. He says he's going to try and get a bit more power this time as well. The old freeland is still looking reasonably clean, it's not getting too dirty yet. Okay, bit of spin there, but you saw already that it took the power off, it didn't allow him to spin. And I expect just when he gets to that bit of route there, it's going to take all the power away and it's now... Oh, maybe he's going to make it, maybe, maybe he's keeping that power on and he's pulling the steering wheel left and right to get a bit of extra go. But I think that's probably pretty much... It, unless he just switched that into a different mode, I don't know, that had some extra power then. Okay, so he didn't make it to the top in the normal mode, but he made it further than he did in the uh, grass, gravel and snow. It's Keith. Again, not much difference there, Harv. He, uh, I thought, did it give you a bit allow you to get a bit more power as you hit yeah. the top? Once it figured out I was spinning a lot, or not spinning a lot, but once it's not moving power, yeah, it gave me more power. Okay, should we give it one more go now? Now you've got used to it using the mud and rut setting. Mud and ruts, okay, yep. Got you. Oh, it's just started to rain as well now. <laughs> Here he goes. So this is on mud and ruts. Oh, that. oh yes, that's giving it full power and completely covered me with mud, but he's made it to the top pretty easily. The traction control system and the, and the terrain response has really helped us out, I think, even though it's so muddy and slippery. If you, if you weren't aware of it as, as well, it uses a, a Haldex type of system, which is an um, electronic um, clutch that enables the front and the rear wheels to be able to um, be um, controlled how much power is going to the front and the back. Um, that's different, actually, I think, than on the uh, Freelander 1 that uses a viscous coupling. Hopefully you found that interesting and enjoying. We've had a, a great bit of fun here today as well. As you can see, cars got pretty dirty, but um, I'm sure once we take that down to the jet wash, it'll all be good again. Thanks very much, everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and hopefully we'll be bringing you some new things in the near future. Thanks then, bye-bye.